In today's video, we'll unbox and set up the Raspberry Pi 500 Desktop Kit and install PiOS Desktop. In addition, we'll try out some additional operating systems such as Botocera, Ubuntu, Windows 11, all to help you determine if this is the right Pi for you. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. I picked up this Pi 500 from our friends at Canikit, and I paid full price for it. The Pi 500 combines the power of the Raspberry Pi 5 into a keyboard form factor billed as the Raspberry Pi 500 Desktop Kit, basically turning it into a plug-and-play computer. This model includes 8GB of RAM. Let's get it out of the box and check it out. The kit includes everything you need to connect it up to your monitor or TV, including the official Raspberry Pi wired optical mouse, the white variant, and the Raspberry Pi 27 watt USB-C power supply. Below the cardboard divider, you'll find a micro HDMI to HDMI cable and the official Raspberry Pi beginner's guide, now in its fifth edition for the Raspberry Pi 5. It's a nice book and covers an extensive number of topics spanning 278 pages. I almost missed it, but there is also a micro SD to SD adapter that you may also find helpful to have. And of course, the star of the show, the Raspberry Pi 500 itself. At first glance, it looks very similar to its predecessor, the Raspberry Pi 400. We'll compare the two briefly in just a few moments. The keyboard layout looks largely the same. However, when I started typing on it, something didn't seem right. It feels a little bouncy, and you can see towards the middle when I type, the plastic flexes. There's not much on the back except for some ventilation slots and four rubber pads. The Pi 500 is passively cooled, meaning there are no fans to make any noise or to need replacing in the future. On the back, you have a single USB 2.0 port, ideal for connecting the USB mouse, two USB 3.0 ports, and a micro SD slot, which already has PiOS Desktop pre-installed on a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. Then the USB-C power input, two micro HDMI ports supporting 4K 60fps output. There is a rubber cover over the 40 pin GPIO header if you want to use the Pi 500 with your own electronics projects. And there is also a gigabit ethernet port. I'll place the full specifications on screen if you want to pause the video and check out all the specs in more detail. For a quick comparison, here is the Pi 400. The delete key on the Pi 500 has been shifted to the left and replaced by a dedicated power button, and the number lock button has been removed. As a result, the numbers for the num lock have been removed from the Pi 500 keys. When pressing keys on the keyboard, the plastic is more flexible when you type on the Pi 500, where there seems to be no flex noticed on the Pi 400. At the bottom, aside from the difference in color, the only other difference I see is that the Pi 500 includes a grip padding on all four corners, while the Pi 400 does not include the padding at the front of the keyboard. Therefore, the Pi 500 should have a slightly better grip on your desk. From the side, things look largely the same in terms of the keyboard height. At the back, all the same ports on the Pi 400 exist on the Pi 500, but their locations have been moved around. As the Pi 5 includes a new PCIe or PCIe Express port, it would have been ideal if the Pi 500 managed to expose access to that port on the Pi 500. In my opinion, this is an unfortunate omission. Getting the Pi 500 connected to your HDMI TV or monitor is very easy. Just connect the mouse, then the micro HDMI end to the port nearest the USB-C power input, and the other end to your TV or monitor. Then plug in the power, and from here, the Pi 500 will begin to boot in a Pi Desktop. When Pi Desktop starts up, simply click Next. Make any changes to your country, language, and time zone. I'll check Use US Keyboard and English Language, then click Next. 
Now enter your username and password for logging into the Pi and click Next. Select your Wi-Fi network name or SSID from the list and click Next. Enter your Wi-Fi password and again click Next. Now select your default browser. I'll leave it set for Chromium and click Next. I highly recommend updating at this time, so I'll click Next. The update process will take several minutes, so I'll go ahead and skip forward. Once done, click OK and restart to reboot your Pi 500. After the Pi 500 reboots, you may notice an icon in the upper right for Raspberry Pi Connect. This will allow you to remote access in your Pi from another computer. I have a dedicated video for that. I'll add a link to that video if you're interested in setting it up. After installation, you'll find a number of useful applications for programming. The LibreOffice suite of applications. And many more. Launching a browser and navigating to a YouTube video plays well at 720p with very few drop frames with Stats for Nerds turned on. And there are a handful of games pre-installed if you want to check them out. You can go into Preferences, Screen Configuration, and change the resolution to 1080p if you prefer it over the default of 720p. I had a few community questions about the Pi 500 from other videos that I'd like to address. This one is in regards to running Bodice Era 40 on the Pi 500. At the time I tried to replicate the problem, a new version of Bodice Era was released, version 41. I installed it to a micro SD card, booted it up, and it seemed to run just fine on the Pi 500. So I think whatever issue the viewer had has been fixed in the most recent Bodice Era build. To learn more about Bodice Era on the Pi, please see the video linked above. Another question I received was that installing Ubuntu to a Pi 500 wasn't working. I tried the same, and after entering all the details for the setup, once the installer got to the point of configuring the keyboard, the installer crashed. I haven't yet found a solution to this, and it may require a new build of Ubuntu from the development team. I recently released a video demonstrating how to install Windows 11 to an external SSD. Unfortunately, when attempting to boot Windows 11 from the Pi 500, I just got a black screen. If you want to play around with Windows 11 on the Pi, you may want to stick with a Pi 5, 4, or 8 gig model. I'm also hearing there are issues booting Windows 11 on the Pi 5 using the latest 16 gigabyte model as well. I've not purchased one of those yet. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a video on it. Lastly, I wanted to check out the passive cooling on the Pi 500. Since there are no fans to keep it cool, I was curious how it would perform. I installed Stress, I'll place a link below to information on how to run the same test if you are interested. After running the test and stressing all four cores, the highest temperature that I saw was 49.4 degrees Celsius. This demonstrates that not having active cooling is not a problem with the Pi 500. That brings us to the end of another video. I think the Pi 500 is a decent machine for someone looking for a simple plug-and-play computer that can run Pi Desktop. However, if you're wanting something that can use the PCI Express port or any of the OS's shown here that had issues, you may instead want to consider the Raspberry Pi 5. The plastic flexing in the keyboard while typing is a little bit distracting to me, but not a major issue. What are your thoughts on the Pi 500? I'd be interested to hear what you think in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button. And if you'd like to see similar content like this in the future, I hope you'll consider subscribing. And with that, I look forward to talking with you again very soon.